Which it's fantasy it's players are we trying to avoid in 2023, given their current ADP? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Before we get into it, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, like always, that would be fantastic. We're going to continue to put out some fantasy material and videos for you guys. And today we got the whole game here. How's it going, guys? It's been a while since the three of us have been together. What's new? July 6th. Hey, so. what's up? Yeah, I've, I've been... Go ahead. <laughs> oh, it's July 6th, so we're past the holiday wow. and getting into the heat of summer. Training camps are going to start in a few weeks. There's still decisions to be made on some players and stuff like that. So it's starting to become an interesting time. Indeed, indeed. Brian, how's it going? Yeah, it's good. It's good to be back. Um, I don't even, it seems like I haven't been on in like months, but uh, it's probably been like three weeks or something like that. No, maybe it has been longer, but it's been yeah, like two just, months, uh, man. Yeah, it might be. But yeah, I'm here now, so uh, and I'm ready to uh, talk shit to you, Dad. You're <laughs> chicken, chicken pooping, chicken shitting it out. Chicken <laughs> shitting it out. Yeah. So you mentioned it's it's July six. So um, I think we're like sixty or sixty one days from kickoff. I know it's very it's it's very low in the sixties. <laughs> um, so we're getting there. We're about two months away. And uh, which means we're less than two months away from fantasy drafts. And today's video, we're, we're kind of talking about um, guys that at their current ADP and where they're where they're going, we're, we're avoiding now. Again, it's July 6th. So the ADP is maybe a little bit off uh, because a lot of it's like best ball and related. There's not a lot of redraft fantasy leagues um, drafting their teams right now, but um, so this is information about where guys are going. We're going to go through the first seven rounds and we're going to choose. Uh, you guys are each going to choose a guy that you're kind of saying, I don't want to draft them at where they're currently going. Uh, kind of too rich for your blood. Um, seven rounds because kind of figured, you know, those should kind of be your first seven rounds. Theoretically, they should all be starters depending on the format of your league. So um, but I'm going to stop rambling. We're going to get right into it, into round one. I'm going to list off the guys that are going in round one, according to NFFC ADP over the last month. So we have Justin Jefferson at the first spot, Jamar Chase, Christian McCaffrey, Travis Kelsey coming in at four, Tyreek Hill, five, Austin Eckler, sixth, Cooper Cup, Bijan Robinson, Stefan Diggs, Patrick Mahomes at 10th overall. Uh, C.D. Lamb and A.J. Brown round out the first round of a 12-team league. Uh, Dad, we're going to start with you. Who are you saying too rich for your blood round one pick here? Yeah, um, it was kind of hard, you know, looking at the first round. All these players are are money players except for B. John Robinson. And, and to me, he has to prove the hype. Okay, I understand how good of a player he is. Can't miss, you know. He's going to have 1,500 yards and 12 touchdowns and catch the ball and and all the other stuff. And I think I think he's going to have a very good year. Okay, um, I think he's in the right offense, right coach in Atlanta. Um, I just need to see it first. I think. Um, so the rest of the players on here, they've all been they've all done it um, on the NFL field in fantasy leagues and stuff like that. So so there's a lot of hope, want, and things like that. Geez, I think he should. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, I drafted Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I know he didn't have the same kind of um, hype as uh, Bijan and stuff like that, but. You know, I drafted him in the first round, CEH, and that was a big, that was a big no-no. So maybe I got PTSD from that, or I I like to see it. So that's my guy that I'm saying. I don't know, I'm not sure I would draft him in the first round. Uh, 
Sorry, wait, right. we're, we're, all right, yeah, sorry. I, uh, I think I'm on a, a bit of a delay, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, Bijan definitely is like the the big unknown, right? Like, like you said, we haven't seen it yet, but lots of hype. We've seen uh, we've seen guys like him tear it up in their rookie year, so he's in the right offense. I just don't know. Uh, outside of injuries, like how it's necessarily going to go wrong. Well, I mean, I guess I can see it going wrong because the, the Falcons could suck, but that doesn't mean he'll necessarily suck for fantasy. But I like Bijan, like where he yeah. is. But I was uh, muted when I was talking, so oh. um, that's <laughs> yeah, why I didn't hear anything. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it, yeah, it, it's tough when you when you haven't seen it yet and justifying it over certain guys. But I think he's going to smash this year and. I always think about like Saquon Barkley basically after his first year became the number one running back. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott had a really good rookie year. Leonard Fournette had a pretty good rookie year. These guys that get drafted in the first round tend to do well. So, uh, but uh, I understand the concern there. Brian, who's your guy that you are kind of avoiding or don't want to take in the first round out of these 12 guys? Yeah. um, It's definitely got to be Patrick Mahomes. Like, he's he's not that good you know like he doesn't have receivers no, <laughs> no it, it is actually like really patrick mahomes but mostly just because of the position like it's gonna be kind of like as i went through this little exercise you gave us i was kind of noticing some things like kind of like patterns and stuff just like yeah like it's not necessarily about the player it's just kind of like the way this draft or like the way the ADPs are kind of falling right now. They seem very like wide receiver heavy. And so there's just other guys that I'd like here. Like, and it's not even, it's like, I, I mean, I like, you know, Jonathan Taylor and Saquon Barkley, like in this position kind of thing, you know, like even over the two receivers that are sitting there, like I'd probably take one of them. So I don't know. I, I just feel Mahomes, it's too early. I mean, it, he's like the ultimate, like, you don't have to ever think about another guy at that position kind of a thing. So I get it, but yeah, just too rich. Yeah. I, I think um, this is partially based on best ball. In best ball, you kind of, quarterbacks get pushed up a bit in best ball. Um, but I will say there's probably going to be people in your home league like that take a quarterback in the first round, you know, that seems to happen in, in our home, our home league every year. Like maybe guys that, um, you know, the quarterbacks are the the sexy position when you watch the NFL. So like you see the name Patrick Mahomes and say, like, yeah, you know, I want that guy. So, um, but yeah, I, I can see why, you know, wanted, wanted to wait on the quarterback and not spend a first round pick on them. Yeah. And, um, and it kind of goes hand in hand with, you know, how much how much better do you think Mahomes is going to be in fantasy than Allen or Hurts, you know? Yeah. You can wait a little bit for them. But, yeah, it's just – yeah, it's a little too early. And I just feel like the receivers and now even the quarterbacks in these – in the current ADPs, are they're kind of pushing down the running backs a little bit too much for my liking where I feel like it kind of prevents – or sets up a little, like some pretty good running back uh, value early on. Yeah. We'll get into round two. I'm going to let you start, Brian, but I'm going to read off who's going in round two right now. Uh, Jonathan Taylor with the 201. Saquon Barkley, Amara St. Brown, Devontae Adams, Garrett Wilson at the 205. Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts back to back. Jalen Waddell at eight. Nick Chubb at nine. Devontae Smith, 10. Tony Tony Pollard, 11. And then Josh Jacobs rounding out round two. So, Brian, who's a guy... Who's a guy in that um, group that you're kind of concerned or don't want to draft in the second round? Yeah, so you're going to continue to see the like the theme through this video and the the guys we like at where they're at. But it's Devontae Smith at I guess that would be two ten, so twenty second overall. And I, I kind of feel the same way. Like it's not that I, I have any problem with him. And I, I honestly, I kind of hate when people are like, oh, you could just wait six picks and then pick up T. Higgins or something. And it's like, well, I guess in this case, you would actually have close to that pick anyways. But I just hate when people are like, oh, you could just wait a little bit and then get this guy instead. It's like, well, you're not going to have that pick. 
But yeah, um, I just feel like the the running backs are getting pushed down a little bit too much. Like, you know, um, according to this ADP, you know, Josh Jacobs is still there. Derrick Henry. I mean, I kind of like Chris Olave better than Devontae Smith. Um, but I think I, I again, I just feel like the running backs are getting pushed down by the I think I don't I didn't remember what I actually counted, but he's got to be like what wide receiver 12 or something or 13 at this point at the end of the second round. And I just feel like that's too early. I know a lot of leagues are going to start three wide receiver like formats, too. So maybe that's part of it. But and maybe I'm not adjusting quick enough, but I just like other guys here a little bit better. Yeah, wide receiver 12. I always have a hard time with these guys. T Higgins, Devontae Smith, like that you know they're the second best receiver on their team. Yeah. I just always have a hard time taking them. You have to take them this second, early third. But, yeah, if I'm always want. just like, if you want them, yeah. And, and it's just like, but they're the second best receiver. But they still put up big numbers, you know. Devontae Smith, last year and a half PPR, was wide receiver 10, you know. So it's like hard to argue yeah. against it for sure. So, um, well, good, good, Dad. Um, who's the guy that you're down on in this group? Yeah, definitely for me, it's Tony Pollard. Um, Tony Pollard is in this position because what he did last year, as as all players are, but um, but Tony Pollard, you know, had, rode the coattails of Ezekiel Elliott. Zeke did all the hard stuff, even though he didn't. Um, he did all the goal line carries. Uh, he had, I think he was number two in the NFL on goal line carries. Um, I heard on uh, XM Radio the other day. Tony Pollard. Uh, well, Zeke's not there, so so they're expecting Tony Pollard, you know, to to be, you know, a real top flight quarter. Uh, I'm sorry, top flight running back, and he'll he'll be good. I just don't think he's round two good, you know? So. Yeah. A lot of people are excited about him. I mean, as of now, it's kind of his running back room and knowing else. But, yeah, there's always that concern of, like, can he handle the load? He's never done it in his college career. He's never done it in the NFL. Um, you kind of almost want them to bring – So I mean, someone's going to be the RB2 there, but – like he can, it seems like he might be better as what he was used last year. You know, he's RB seven last year in half PPR, even though he wasn't. He was kind of the the one B kind, of, you know, in in a way to to Zeke. So, um, yeah, I understand the concern with with Pollard there, but it's just, honestly, I when I look, it was like he'd smash. When I was looking at uh, Pollard's stats, it's like yeah, like around like what he did last year, around two hundred carries for a thousand yards. And 39 catches for, you know, 370. Um, it's like, yeah, no, I, th I definitely think that he can do that again. Like, when I actually looked at that, I was like, oh, it wasn't as crazy as I thought it was going to be. And I guess you're not necessarily drafting him there. You're getting him at the end of the second round. So, yeah, I guess. But, yeah, I kind of, I mean, he did get 12 touchdowns again uh, mm -hmm. last year. So, or, so it's kind of like, I don't know. But I, I just don't know how you take Tony Pollard over Derrick Henry necessarily, unless you're just really afraid he's going to break. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Henry, that is. Yeah, it's the age thing with Henry. It's not even just the age, it's the amount of carries, too. Like, yeah, I think we're kind of uh, learning that it might be a little bit more. It's less about age and more about carries, I think, a little bit to a certain extent. And, and Henry's had. He's led the league in carries three of the last four years. So, and the only reason he's not four straight years is because he got hurt. Um, but moving into round three, it's a nice little Third transition. Tension, guess, but... What's that? No, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, into round three, uh, the guys going in round three, Derek Henry, Chris Olave, uh, Joe Burrow at the 303, T Higgins, Najee Harris, DK Metcalf from Andre Stevenson at three at the three hundred seven. Mark Andrews, Brees Hall, Debo Samuel, Lamar Jackson, and Keenan Allen rounds out round three. Dad, who are you down on in this group? Yeah, as um, much as I don't like to say it, I think um, 
Keenan Allen is my down check in this group. Um, he's been he's he's getting a little he's getting a little older. Last year he was hurt for about a third of the season or more, but and I know when he plays he catches a hundred passes. He's never been a huge touchdown machine, but um. So, you know, I just think he's getting a little older, and um, and I, I don't think that justifies a, a round three pick. But, um, you know, I think that was my only uh, thought process in that. So you're an ageist. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you know, I, I still think, I think he'll still have 80 to 90 catches, and, you know, he'll still be – you know, kind of uh, Herbert's man and things like that. And, you know, like I said, he's never, I don't even know if he's ever been double digit touchdowns, but I'm just. Um, no, he hasn't. Yeah. He's more with Her- Herbert. I mean, he had eight, eight in 2020, four last year in 10 games. Um, yeah. He, you know, he just turned 31. So it's always, a, always in the back of your mind. Um, I did go back and look at like receiver ages and like where they finish, I think it was, um, I think there were six guys, 31 or older that finished top 10 since 2013. And then another like six guys that finished in the top 20. So, you know, you're getting 12 guys finishing in the top 20, about one a year that are 31 and older. So yeah, it's, it is concerning. That's for sure. Um, Brian, who's the guy that you're down on in this group? Um, I, I think I took like, I don't know if it's low hanging fruit necessarily, but like I'm, I'm going with Brees Hall, like, you know, just with the injuries and stuff, like, I don't know. Now, now there's like, and I, I don't buy into like the rumors too much, but sometimes I don't buy into them at all. And then it's, it's always kind of like, Oh, I guess that was kind of a surprise. Cause maybe there was something to it, but you know, it's like, Oh, there's rumors about uh, Dalvin cook and going to the jets and stuff like that. And it's just kind of mm-hmm. like, of course, until that happens, you don't really know anything, but it's just kind of like, I don't know. I I, I just kind of have to be out on him in round three. Like, I, I mean, at least he's going at the end of round three, but I, I, I just feel like there's a few other guys I would rather have there. And it's probably, I mean, it's, it's probably a good spot if you're picking at the end of round three to be looking at quarterbacks and stuff because, you know, maybe you go a little bit early on Lamar or something like that and lock it up mm-hmm. because I'm sure the first three guys will be gone and, you know, maybe he's a decent pivot from there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the injury, right? Like, if he didn't have the injury, he'd be a first-round pick easily, you know? So, yeah, I mean, we are two months out. We're a few weeks away from training camp, so we don't know yet, but it is concerning for sure. Um you know yeah, how I feel you, about the injuries. If, if you want to take a chance on an injured guy coming back and tearing it up, uh, just wait four rounds, get Javante Williams, even though we didn't see it from him the way we saw it from Brees Hall, but it's like do something better with your third round pick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he could be your first running back, you know, and like you're relying on him to be your number one guy, and he might not be that guy for a while. Yeah. So. Even four weeks is a long time in, in fantasy. You know, it's a third yeah. of the season. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, even if he's on the on the pup list or he doesn't play four to six weeks, you know, and we first see him in into October, you know, it's like that's a, you're right, you know, it's like you gotta play you gotta, you know, play for real every week. So of course mm-hmm. Yeah. And, starting, and starting, he doesn't yeah, starting right, with sorry. a handicap is not exactly the way I'd like to do it. He, yeah, he doesn't come back in week seven and he's just the man all of a sudden either. You know, he works his way yeah. back in and whatever. So it's like that's just too much time. Yeah, I agree. Uh, moving into round four, uh, the 12 guys going in round four right now Travis Etienne, DeAndre Hopkins, TJ Hawkinson. Amari Cooper at the three, uh, sorry, 404. Jerry Judy, Justin Herbert, Jameer Gibbs at the 407. 
uh, Calvin Ridley, Kenneth Walker, DJ Moore, Drake London, and then rounds it out with Trevor Lawrence. Brian, go ahead and start with the guy you are low on. Yeah, uh, Jerry Judy. Like, I can't believe he's going like one pick after Amari Cooper. It's like, I'd be, I'd be, oh my God, like, I can't even imagine. I don't even want Jerry Judy as like my, my number three guy. Just, just again, like, I don't know, last year, I didn't even have him on any team, so he didn't even burn me, so I can't even make that excuse, but it's just like, the Broncos, man, like, I don't know, let's see it. I don't think they're completely shot. Um, I didn't pay enough attention to them after that atrocious, like, Thursday night game, or maybe it was like their first four games where they were scoring like six points a game or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I just couldn't even. Changed. <laughs> yeah, I know it, it was terrible. So I don't know. I just I'm out on the Broncos, especially in the in, in the round four. That's just way too much. Like, well, we've been we've been waiting for Judy for two or three years now. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, I was, I was actually looking at Russell Wilson's stats while you guys were talking. He didn't even throw 500 times. So it's like, I don't know. Judy got 100 targets. I just don't, I don't know if I see the, the, the process or, you know, the numbers. I mean, Tim, Tim Patrick's the man all of a sudden and Dulcich is awesome. And Sean Payton uh, is just going to fix everything. And I just, I'm not buying it all. Yeah. yeah I can see that. He, he's one of those though. Like you go back and look and, you're like, wow, he actually did. Like, where would you say he finished in your mind last year? Like, total points in half PPR, Jerry Judy. Like, what, what uh, wide receiver? What? 24. Yeah, you're close. He was wide receiver 21. So, oh, shit. Um, and he missed two games. So, like, he averaged uh, 0.8 points less than Amari Cooper. You know, like, it's kind of weird. You just don't think of it like that. He had a really big, um, Basically, week thir- uh, 14 on, he was one of the best receivers. He probably won people some uh, fantasy championships. Like, he was uh, wide receiver two in those fantasy championship, basically, playoffs. Um, yeah. So, yeah, he was averaging almost 17 points a game, uh, which was, like, Justin Jefferson numbers. Yeah, I think people are just buying into the Sean Payton thing. So, I think that's why you see him uh, up here at round four kind of – this is the last year, right? Like last year for him. If he doesn't do it, then you know everyone's going to be out. It, Adios, it MFR. Might, it might just be those people that he won championships for that are picking him in round four. So, yeah, I say let him have him. Yeah. Indeed, Dad. Who are you down on in round four? Yeah, I'm down on Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon? Yeah. No, round, um, round four, not round five. Sorry. Jameer Gibbs. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, geez, I'm a Lions fan, you know, born and raised in Michigan. Do I do I want to be down on Jameer Gibbs? I'm down on Jameer Gibbs because it's round four. And um, everybody thinks, you know, they're going to they're gonna crown the guy. And stuff like that. You can't forget David Montgomery is in front of him. So um, I know Gibbs will will have some offensive numbers. You know, um, they got a very good offensive coordinator who will integrate this guy in. And um, we can only hope, um, you know, as Lions fans that he does well. But I'm not sure if I'm uh, jumping on... um, the round four Jameer Gibbs bandwagon right now. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love Jameer Gibbs. I mean, like, especially on that offense, it's like, again, DeAndre Swift is another one of those guys. Like, you think he finished like running back 40? He was running back 22. You know, he averaged um, the same amount of points as Leonard yeah. Fournette and Najee Harris, you know? Um, yeah, that's really surprising. <laughs> yeah, like he averaged exactly the same amount of points as those who's got those two guys, like 0. 0.3 points less than Miles Sanders. And, you know, like, you, don't, you just don't see it. So I just think Christian McCaffrey, rookie year, 
I can see that for, for Gibbs. McCaffrey had 435 rushing yards, um, 651 receiving yards with 80 catches and seven touchdowns. Like I can see that in, in his, in play for him. Um, and I'm sure that was good for the top 12, 15 running back, you know? So, um, but no, you're sticking with uh, the theme of like, you kind of want to see it first, right? So um, I can respect it for sure. Um, running back 11, McCaffrey finished his rookie year with those numbers. So um, moving no, into so round five, what, or you want to say something, Brian? Sorry. Um, where is, I can probably look this up easily enough. Where is, um, what running back number is that? Yeah, I'd have to... I would have to pull up. Um... I know I was trying to pull it up real quick too, but I bet you he's probably around running back fifteen. Or do you think? No, he's probably yeah, probably close to that. I'm just trying to. Count yeah, I'll tell you in. here. I'll tell you here in just a second. Um, or actually, probably closer to running back twelve. I see he's him going uh... running back fourteen. Okay, so yeah. So yeah, I don't know. You might be like. He might be a little bit closer to his ceiling there, I guess. But mm-hmm. I, I know you're just kind of using an example, but it's kind yeah. of like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's, he's going to, I guess we're just, you know, he's going to have to catch like 80 passes and stuff because Montgomery's going to be there and take the bulk of the guy. I don't see him getting more than like 150 carries or something. Um, but yeah, he's, a, he's an interesting guy for sure. Um, into round five, uh, the 12 guys going in round five. We have Aaron Jones, Justin Fields, Terry McLaurin at the 503. Joe Mixon, Christian Kirk, Christian Watson, George Kittle, Dalvin Cook at the 508. Uh, Chris Godwin, Michael Pittman, J.K. Dobbins, and Mike Williams rounding out round five. Dad, you already kind of mentioned it. Um, your guy that you're down on. Is- yeah, I already narked on myself and said Joe <laughs> Mixon and uh- – um Joe Mixon's had a lot of a lot of work with the Bengals, I think, for the last seems like five five years, maybe six years. Um he you know they seem to be having a contract squabble because he makes ten, eleven million dollars right now. And you know, and I, I keep on hearing I, I heard it on the radio, they're even you know they don't want to get rid of them. Something's going to happen. You know they're going to get they're going to get rid of them, and um, he's going to end up. He's not going to end up as the man. I I believe, like he is on the Bengals. Okay, so he's going to end up as sharing a running back room with somebody else on another team. You know the Chargers or the Dolphins or. Uh, you know, the Texans, you know, I'm just throwing some teams out there. So, so Joe Mixon, round five. Sorry, you're out of there. See, I'm kind of <laughs> the opposite, uh, in my opinion, just because, you know, this is a reflection of him with the uncertainty of not being on the Bengals. And now we're sitting at July 6th, and it's like, okay, at what point do we just say Mixon's going to just be on the Bengals? Like, the Bengals didn't really draft anyone. They didn't bring anyone in to replace. Like, this is a team that has Super Bowl aspirations. Like, do they want to just like cut their running back in mid July before training camp and just roll with like, you know, Chase Brown and Travion was it Williams or something like that? Like, I don't know. It's just I'm kind of at the point where like I'm assuming he's going to be on the Bengals, and if he is, like, this is a steal round five. Um, but. Like you said, if he's not on the Bengals, then I, I agree with you. But at this point, it's like, what, what are you going to do, you know? Yeah, he's still there. Yeah. I mean, I know there's some free agents out there, so maybe that's their plan. But, um, Brian, you want to talk about your guy? or? Yeah. Um, so I, I, try, I, I should have mentioned this a little bit earlier. I don't even remember what the example was. but So I tried to avoid guys like Dalvin Cook, who's not on a team and stuff like that. Um, I, oh, Hopkins was the round before. I tried not to pick guys like that just because it was kind of like, well, we don't know, you know. I mean, it's kind of mm-hmm. obvious why, or else, I mean, he would be kind of like the one who stands out a lot in this round. 
is Delvin Cook. But um, yeah, I went with Michael Pittman. Um, I just, I guess uh, maybe I'm reverting to, I've been listening to dad too much or something. And I want to see something. <laughs> I want to see it. Um, so while, while you guys were talking, I was trying to look up. So the Colts, they threw the ball 600 times last uh, last year. And I know that's like that's not crazy above average. Like, um, but I saw the average was like five sixty. So, but it's like they're not going to do that this coming year. Like, they're not going to throw it quite as much. So, I see that coming down probably quite a bit. Um, just with the assuming Anthony Richardson's going to be there, and I, I mean, it's just going to be interesting to see. Like, we really don't know what to expect out of these out of this offense. So I'm just kind of speculating, obviously, but it's like, you know, they got Jonathan Taylor. Like I think Michael Pittman will still be the number one guy, but I don't think that he's necessarily going to get like, he might still get his like 25% target share. It's basically what he got last year. Um, that's fine. But I just don't see that number being 140 targets necessarily. Well, yeah. And plus, you know, sorry to butt in, you know, we're having, you got a rookie qu- quarterback who's got to learn yep. learn the game. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I don't think he's going to throw as much there, you know. And obviously, like, he's got some running ability. Um, I mean, obviously, we don't even know if Richardson's going to start. But yeah, they got Jonathan Taylor. You know, like they they got other ways to like kind of win these games than through Michael Pittman, like maybe he'll be fine like at this adp because again i i haven't i didn't really keep up on it like oh it's just wide receiver what versus what but i i think it's just because i saw a couple of guys after him that i preferred and so it's kind of like oh we'll push him down or push him up the list kind of thing so wide receiver 28 is what it's at um okay yeah i actually made a video kind of going into like anthony richardson and what to expect from the Colts offense and kind of using like historical stuff of rookie quarterbacks. And also, you know, the, the head coach of the, the Colts, Shane Steichen was uh, Jalen Hurts' offensive coordinator in the last two years. And, and their, their transition to like, if you guys remember in 2021, like the first six, seven weeks for the Eagles, they were throwing the hell out of the ball. Like the fans would cheer when they would, whenever they would run the ball, like the, the, the stadium would start clapping um, and they were like two and uh, two and five or something those first seven weeks. And then they kind of had like a, a philosophy change and they started to run the ball way more and only throw the ball like 25 times a game. And ever since then, they've kind of like done that offense. And, you know, we saw how successful they were last year with that. Yeah. And so, yeah, basically like what Michael Pittman needs to do is like get like a 30% target share. And even then that like, basically comes out to like a thousand 1100 yards so he's going to need to catch like a bunch of touchdowns to really be good i mean wide receiver 28 like he can put up those numbers but not a not a whole lot of upside there in my opinion so um yeah i kind of agree with that one um but next year maybe when he goes he's a free agent he goes to a better team for him um Two more rounds. We're going into round six. Um, we got Miles Sanders at the 601, Tyler Lockett, Cam Akers, Deontay Johnson, Damian Pierce, Alexander Madison, DeAndre Swift at the uh, 607, Brandon Ayuk, Deshaun Watson, Kyle Pitts, Dallas Goddard, and Rashad White at the 612. Brian, go ahead and start with the guy you are down Yeah, with. so the way I kind of summed up this round is kind of like these are all the guys – that we kind of like, I'm th- talking about the running back specifically. So Miles Sanders, Akers, Damian Pierce, Alexander Madison, and Rashad White. I, I skipped over Swift because he's my guy. So those guys are all expected. Like they're going to be the number one guys. The offenses are going to be a part of. Like uh, that's kind of the assumption anyways. With I mean, some of it we haven't seen like Madison and Sanders yet, but mm-hmm. that's the assumption. But their offenses aren't that great. And so that's why they're kind of down here, but they're kind of they're they're supposed to be the first guys up in their uh on their team. And with DeAndre Swift, I don't know if that's actually true. I obviously he's gonna be on like a good offense and everything, but it's like I'm pretty sure uh 
Philly, weren't they like last in pass attempts to the running back last year? Um, yeah. I think I've heard that several times, like in regards to Swift. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, I just don't see it for him necessarily. I like all those other running backs here and even some of the receivers that are here. I just don't think this is the round for him. I just feel like there's better stuff around him. Yeah. Yeah. The Eagles had 61 targets to running backs last year. If you just think about that, Austin Eckler had like 110 freaking catches, you know? Like, yeah. It just, it basically comes out to like three and a half targets a game, not catches, targets. Right. So it's part of the offense that they run, the RPO stuff. And, um, you know, you're not going to have an RPO and you're throwing it to a running back. It's just not. But as you said earlier, now they got a new offensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. Uh, Swift does catch the ball pretty good. So mindsets can change, but, but, you know, like, like I've been preaching, um, you know, you got to see it first, unfortunately, you know, but, yeah. um, and, so. and they got, they got Rashad Penny first, didn't they? They did. I'm not sure what a, what a pass catcher he is. I, I'm not no, sure. No, yeah. I don't think. They I traded, see. they traded for Swift. He wasn't a free agent. So it was a little. Right. Yeah, they gave up like a fourth or fifth round pick or something. No, I think it was. Yeah, but I'm saying like that's why Penny was first because he was a free agent. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Um, Yeah, they didn't give up much for Swift. But I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe they're going to use him a little more. But yeah, it's it's tough there. I like the other guys around there. But um, Dad, who are you down on in this round six? Um. Yeah, I'm down on um, what round six? Round six, yeah. Yeah, yeah round six. Uh, yeah, Alexander Madison. Um, um, so he's, you know, everybody knows he was playing behind Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook was, you know, the bell cow. So. So uh, Alexander Madison has never had a large amount of carries. He's never had to carry the load, and now now it's his turn. So I don't think he's I don't think he's going to last all seventeen games. And um, so I think he's you know I'm I'm a little down on him for a round six running back. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Like, I was asking myself, like, what running back who has never had more than 500 yards rushing in a season, like, broke out in their fifth year? There actually is a guy that came to mind, was Michael Turner, uh, who was behind with Amy and Tomlinson on the Chargers for four years, went to the Falcons, and then he rushed for 1,700 yards, you know? But he also had, like, 380 carries. So I don't think Madison's going to be getting that. But. It, it, it could be possible. It could be possible. I, I'm a little more comfortable with Madison like here than I am like Madison in like the fourth round, you know, going around like Kenneth Walker and Gibbs and stuff. But um, yeah, I totally understand. Like, anyway, I think Madison will go in the fourth round if we go into late August and they didn't add, they don't add anybody. Yeah, I, I was trying to remember when when I'm not Cook. Kidding. <laughs> when Cook was actually, do you remember when like Cook was actually like announced, um, or, like when he was cut? Not exactly. Um, no. June tenth. Here we go. I just found it. So yeah, if I if I do this ADP from June tenth, it probably doesn't change too much. I did it from June first. Um, oh no, I can't imagine him being much higher than. Oh maybe I don't know. Maybe. Uh, yeah. But... So. Looks like he was going RB seventeen fifty first overall since since he was since Dalvin Cook was cut. Yeah. Um. So a little higher was that fifth yeah. round, right? Um. No, yeah, this is a uh, sixth round. Yeah, but I'm fifty first overall is. Oh, is, oh, uh, that's where he what, went. Oh, at the beginning of the fifth round. Oh, so, so since. Cut. Since, yeah, since Dobbin Cook was cut. Yeah, that's maybe a little bit too rich for me. But, you know, I don't know. Everything's coming out saying that he's going to be the workhorse. So we'll see. I mean, Joe Mixon is one pick after 51st. 
<laughs> and Aaron Jones is two picks before that. So it's like I'd rather have either one of those guys. Yeah, I agree. Uh, round seven, our last round, uh, we have Mike Evans going in at 701, uh, going 701, Traylon Burks, Marquise Brown, Kadarius Tony, George Pickens, James Conner at the 706, Darren Waller, um, Javante Williams, Isaiah Pacheco, David Montgomery, Jordan Addison, and Jahan Dotson, the 712. So, Brian, go ahead and start with the guy you are down on. Um, I am down on Traylon Burks. Not because, it, it, like, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, I just feel like there's kind of, like, a little bit better choices around him. It's not so much him. It, it's because he's at the very beginning of the seventh round. Again, you're going to tell me, like, he's, like, wide receiver 38 or something like that. Or, like, mm -hmm. it does make it seem, like, more, oh, yeah, like, that is, he is kind of going where he should, I guess. But it's kind of, like. It's just kind of the theme that I'm seeing with the ADPs and stuff like that. Like, I mean, you read the the list, but it's kind of like, I mean, I'd rather have, you know, James Conner or Marquise Brown than him necessarily, you know, like maybe not too much more, but I don't know. I just feel like it's a little bit too soon for him. I mean, he's got the, he's got the profile, you know, as far as we know, like, I mean, we saw what happened last year like in the draft when they took him like they basically traded away aj brown and used the pick to replace him supposedly like kind of was like what we were told mm -hmm. and he missed games last year because of injury but it's like i just don't know what to expect from tennessee honestly like when are they gonna put in levis if at all you know let's see if Tannehill can do it one more time but it's kind of like I mean, we know whose offense this is, so he'll be the number one on the team, I assume, but I don't really know what that means necessarily. Yeah, Tennessee's hard to predict, and especially Traylon Burks, because we didn't see a whole lot. Saw some flashes, but I mean, he could be A.J. Brown, you know, like. Yeah. So he could be I love him in Brown, Dynasty. Yards. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it is tough. And then there's the potential of DeAndre Hopkins going there. So, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That's the other thing. There. I forgot. I wrote that down somewhere and I didn't even like take my notes out. But yeah, that's yeah. the other thing. But again, that's that's speculative. So it doesn't weigh too much on me. It's just kind of more some of the other yeah. things. Yeah, we'll know by the time we're drafting. So, yes. um, Dad, who are you down on? Um, I'm down on Darren Waller. Um, last couple years, um, so I think about four years ago, Darren Waller had an awesome season. Um, I think there was two <laughs> years in a two years in a row that he uh, did really well. You know, with the Raiders, he was the man. He looked the part. You know, has a good story. Um, he's not a spring chicken anymore. Um. Last couple of years, he's had injuries. He just hasn't he hasn't looked the part. I know when we talk tight ends, um, you know, there's about three to five of them that are that are worthy to talk about. And then after then after about I don't know after about Kittle and and Kelsey and Andrews and uh, Hawkinson, you know. It starts to become a little slim pickings, so I don't. I don't think Waller is my guy at round seven. You know, yeah. I'd have to go. I can think of other tight ends that that um, I think I'd be jumping on instead of Waller at pick number seven. Round seven, yeah, yeah. I was going to be out on Waller, going against my rule of like back-to-back -back bad years by an older player type of, uh, type of rule, the Allen Robinson rule, just like avoid that guy. Um, but then he goes to the Giants and it's like, shit, he's like one of like three or four tight ends that I can see like leading their team in targets. Like there's not many of them. It's like Kelsey and Andrews and like Andrews Darren Waller and Dalton Schultz. Like that's kind of it. Maybe Kyle Pitts, like, so I don't know for a tight end. Like he's, he's intriguing for sure. Um, yeah. I heard, 
I heard they don't have enough uh, guys who are going to catch passes out of the slot up there. Yeah. In New York. Yeah, they have a bunch of them. <laughs> they have like um, seven guys. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But he is intriguing, like, for that reason, I guess. But he needs to stay healthy. So I think I'd prefer Waller in seven, round seven, than um, Hawkinson in round four. Um, yeah, definitely. But. You know, so uh, any last words, guys, before we wrap this up? Um, no, uh, I'm looking forward to doing the the guys we're high on at their ADP or the guys we like at their ADP, I guess. Yeah, um, a little more positive. I, I tried not to, like, spoil too much of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it kind of played into you, it, watch that video also, and it'll play into like you'll fully understand my thinking when it comes to. Yeah how this all works come together yeah yeah yep and i'm just overall excited for football to be back in two months so um but we're gonna wrap it up and uh we appreciate it like the video and subscribe i think we're at like 220 subscribers now so trying to get to 250 adios everybody adios and we'll be back uh, looking at guys that we like in the first seven rounds uh-huh.